Hello friends, Jeff here, episode number 41 of Going Direct. Uh, Scotty is not in the office today, so I had to commandeer the ship by myself. I apologize, but also, you're welcome, once again. Uh, we do have an awesome guest today, I'll get to that in just a minute. But first, I gotta talk about the fact that it is prism time in the hobby. Everything in the hobby is starting to feel normal again now that we can expect Prism to come out. So we got Prism football coming out this week. Really excited about that. We may be breaking some of that on the show here in a little bit. And then uh, Prism football is gonna be followed up fairly quickly by Prism basketball. Uh, if you haven't seen our awesome videos, there is an awesome uh, Prism football video that's out and we have a Prism basketball preview video that's gonna be coming out here shortly, so look for those on our social media. Uh, it's also deep, deep into the NBA playoffs. Our Mavs got bounced, I'm sad to say. Uh, they had a really good run, if you're keeping up with the playoffs, uh, until they met the Warriors. We struggled, had one one win. We, we won our home game, uh, one of the home games, I should say. Uh, but man, the Warriors are good. And uh, I think the Warriors are gonna, I, I would predict the Warriors, I don't know, they're looking good. But first, I wanna mention a prediction I made back in episode number, number 36, I believe it was. So my prediction for this year's NBA Finals, Golden State Warriors, Boston Celtics, we'll see how that works out for me. Don't always make a lot of good sports predictions, but that one was a winner. I got another prediction for you. I predict Golden State is going to take it all. Now my guest on this episode is probably not gonna predict it, uh, probably not going to appreciate that take, but I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell him my thoughts anyways, <laughs> just so you guys can see that live. But yeah, it's gonna be a good one. So. The release calendar this week, as you guys know, as we mentioned last week, we have a massive week this week. We have, uh, first off, we had uh, Mosaic La Liga NFT packs releasing early in the week. Then, of course, we had Prism Football coming out today. That's a big one. Um, we have 2022 Revolution WWE. Again, it's our follow-up to WWE Prism. And then finally, we have 2021-22 Mosaic Serie A, not to be confused with Serie A soccer. Next week, again, this is all tentative for next week, but currently next week is looking good with Noor basketball hobby, uh, 2021 Obsidian football, and 2022 Absolute baseball hobby. So, man, it's busy times at the Panini office. So our guest for this week and the hoe for hot seat is none other than my boss, Jason Howarth. Uh, he's our VP of marketing. He's been here at Panini for a while. I'll let him get into that a little bit, but he's got a very rich uh, sports marketing background. So I'm excited to get him on to talk about everything he, he's got just an awesome background and knows a ton. He is the marketing guru around here. Um, and then after that interview, we're gonna open some product. I'm gonna open some uh, 2021 Prism Football with you and some, uh, some Revolution WWE. So stay tuned for that. Let's go check in with uh, Jason Howarth, my boss, in our Hofer Hot Seat interview. Hey guys, what's up? Back at the Hofer Hot Seat, I'm here with none other than my boss, Jason Howarth. He is the VP of uh, Panini Marketing, or marketing at Panini America, as it were. How's it going, Jay? Pretty good, pretty good. I, I know that these questions are going to be easy because, like you said, you're my, I'm your boss. <laughs> exactly. So if I, I don't like I, him, yeah. he just won't be on the next Hofer's Hot Seat. Yeah, I value my position here, so I'm going to keep these as easy, as easy as possible. But there's some interesting stuff in here, I feel like. So I, I've been trying, I, okay, first off, 
I didn't know. Were you ever on an episode when it was just Tracy and Scott? Nope. I had advocated and lobbied for them to do a podcast for like but, over a year to create a podcast. And then they finally did. And then they never invited me on. They just wanted to be the stars of the show. What in the world? So, so we had to wait you, for... Jeff. Thank you, <laughs> We had to wait for a day that Scotty was out of the office for me to get to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that is not true. I know. But, uh, I, but like to, I like to play hard to get. He, he's a very busy man, and so. I had to I had to cram this in between calls. Uh, but we we had to get you on, and we'll explain that more in a little bit. But had to get you on soon, so people yeah. knew who this guy was making appearances. So you have you have a very important job here. How long have you been at Panini? Now? Twelve years. Uh, I started in October of 2010. Oh my gosh, yeah. over a decade. Yeah. How, like, on a scale of one to 10, how much has Panini changed in 12 years? Like a 20? <laughs> Off the charts. Yeah, it's insane. From where it started to where it is now is absolutely insane, and to be part of it all has been incredible. Well, I, I, I want to say this. Let me, let me get a little of the brown nosing out of the way. I, back when I was just a collector before I was on board of Panini, I, I was always looking at Panini's marketing versus the competition and always like gosh they are just killing it like from, from a marketing and content standpoint like Panini really does a good job of reaching the hobby audience so uh, I, I understand why things have changed so much around here not that marketing can take all the credit but like mm -hmm. a, a large portion of that you guys have done a very good job on this podcast, marketing can take all of it. <laughs> there we go. Shock so, one up for the good guys. If anyone wants to challenge me, speak up. Yeah, uh, I don't exactly. see anyone here, so we win. Yeah, we're, we're amongst marketing friendlies in yeah, here. So exactly. If you were to tell like young Jason that you were going to be the vice pre president of marketing for a sports card company, the world's biggest sports card manufacturer, would you have believed it? If you were to tell young Jason who rode his bike to the locker room hobby store in Quincy, Massachusetts <laughs> and spent all his money trying to get the Bo Jackson Donruss rated rookie <laughs> that I would that I would someday work for a trading card company, I'd say you're out of your mind. I like to say now, you know, to my mother that, you know, when she would say, why are you wasting all your money? I'm like, now I'm making all the money because of trading cards. See? So thank you. It all paid off. It, so, it, was, a, it was a long play, right? I, I knew that that Bo Jackson rated rookie would pay off at some point. And here it is. <laughs> so, so you sold that and you bought the yacht. I still have it. <laughs> oh, you do? Yeah. I oh, can. man. Yeah. I love the rated rookie. The 87 Donruss Bo Jackson. He also had 86, which is kind of confusing, but I think that was in like a, uh, the rookie set. Mm -hmm. uh, but okay, so you have a, uh, a, a agency background in yep. like sports marketing. Yeah. Tell, talk to us about how you ended up at Panini. Um, how I ended up at Panini was really interesting. I had been working with uh, Pop Warner uh, on the agency side, and they were partners with Donruss Trading Cards, and, okay. and I had tried, you know, constantly to get Donruss to be a client. Um, and unfortunately, they, they didn't have the, you know, the financial ability to do that, uh, but managed to make a relationship with Scott. Okay, of course. Um, and then, Shout out Scotty P. Yeah, yeah, there you go. And then as things started to progress, um, I saw an announcement that, you know, that Panini was taking over the NBA trading card license. Uh, looked at that press release and like any agency person trying to go get new business, tried to find the best contact, found that person, reached out to them on LinkedIn. Um, we started talking. Uh, nothing really came of it at, the, at that point. Um, and then Panini bought Don Russ. So then I knew Scott. You know, <laughs> yeah. and I was like, Scott, you need to get me this meeting. We need to just have a meeting. And so went through that whole process and, you know, uh, went through a presentation on why we could help grow the Panini brand in the in the U.S. marketplace as they were launching into the U.S. market, um, and we won the business. And so uh, we launched it with the Adrenal Adrenaline Mobile Tour and visited you know NBA cities all around the country. Uh, kicked it off here in Dallas at the NBA All Star Game with Kobe Bryant. No um, kidding on that Rock Rock Star tour bus. And that was kind of what started it all from the agency side of it. Gosh, and then, what a way to kick things off. And then nine months later, I joined as Panini's VP of Marketing. 
What a whirlwind. Yeah. Wow. So were you in, at the agency? Were you in Boston? Yes. Uh, yeah. Jason is originally from Boston. Yes. Loves all the Boston teams. Yes. If go you... green. Go <laughs> green. I know we're going to talk about it later, but go green. <laughs> uh, well, that... Okay, so as we've told on the show before, Scotty was with Donruss. Donruss was bought by Panini yes. and, and became Panini America. And so that it, that makes perfect sense. Then you said you were... Because what you should know and what the internal marketing team knows, Jason loves the rated rookie IP, and it's mm-hmm. awesome. We turned it into emoji, and that hashtag is all over Twitter and Instagram, for that matter. Doc, amazing docuseries. I mean... It but, yes, win, it should win awards, as far as I'm concerned. I okay, all right. All right. I, I don't want to take I don't want to take us too far down one path. But so obviously you're a collector. You love Donruss. Here Donruss is available, and you know it came into your sites. Uh, okay, so uh, the rated rookie series. Did you? That was your brainchild, right? Yeah. A yeah. road to the rated rookie. I should yeah. say yeah. it's on our YouTube. Check it out if you haven't. But it's it's a docu series about. NFL athletes that ha- are going from college to their first year in the pros, you-, you get to go through all the drama of them getting drafted. Talk to me. I know that wasn't on on the list of questions we talked about, but I would love to hear about the Road to the Raider Rookie Series. Yeah, I mean, we started out, you know, thinking about it, playing around with the idea of like, you know, the the process of what it takes to become a rookie and what uh, what rated rookie really is and that that whole process you know on the field and off the field and you know rookies sign a lot of trading cards for us and so you know that's part of the process of becoming a rated rookie is that business side of it and so being able to tell that story and share in those stories you know so we looked at you know doing this as a you know we tried to launch it um you know in the Josh Allen year, uh, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson year, it didn't work out. We didn't have the right people in place to, you know, help bring that to life from a, you know, from a camera point of view. Right. Um, then, you know, pivoted, went down the path and launched it with the Jerry Judy class. Yep. Little did we know that our the day after our first shoot at the NFL Combine, we would literally shut down two weeks later, you know, because of COVID. Oh, gosh. And have to go tell that story in a way that was completely different from anything we had planned. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's kind of how it came to fruition. And so we've continued to build on that year over year. Um, this year is a great class. We're in know. season three now. Yeah, season three. And, man, I, I if I had to pick one episode that stands out, I wouldn't be able to tell you because <laughs> I feel like all of them are so good. There's some that just stand on their own Yeah. Uh, for different reasons. And, you know, when you work with those guys so closely and you see what happens on a day-to-day basis, being a part of that process, you know, just makes that connection so much more special. Oh, I, I can imagine. Well, Panini really has access to some incredible moments in these young athletes' lives. Like, you can imagine we're we, we are getting to talk to them prior to the draft. So, and then we're there draft night. And you can imagine you go from being this college standout to you are officially with an NFL team now. Maybe you went in the first round, but... It's life-changing events, and we're, like, right there to talk to them, talk to their family, see all those reactions. Like, it's really special. Yeah, you know, and think about just this class, like Matt Carell, who's one of the first guys we signed under NIL. Yep. Um, And we went through the whole process with him, you know, know, from the season to, you know, his Heisman campaign where we put him up on a billboard in in Times Square. And, you know, and then he gets hurt in the bowl game, and then he's got to, you know... He's got to, you know, work through that rehab and, you know, only be able to be at Combine and do player, do the interviews and not be able to step on the field and then go through his pro day and and that whole process. And so, like, literally, we've been with this kid forever. We brought him, you know, Matt and, you know, Garrett and, and Aiden, we brought them to the Super Bowl. So we had that connection with them there. They got to kind of experience the brand in, like, real life. Right. Um, you know, outside of seeing cards. Sure. Um, and so, you know, you, you start to cultivate that and, and those relationships. I mean, you know, I say it all the time that, you know, these kids, they'll, they'll start out with a relationship with us here, you know, and they'll go through their entire NFL career and, you know, retired, still signing Panini trading cards, which right. is pretty crazy. I always hear uh, about how... how Barry Sanders is a friend of the brand. You know, like, I grew up as Barry Sanders being, like, 
the legend that we all know him to be now, but watching him just make people look like fools out there on the field. And he's like one of the guys that I hear all the time, oh, you know, we might be able to get Barry Sanders for that. Like he, he's he's a friend of the friend yeah. of the brand. Yeah. Obviously, he wasn't in the Raid Rookie Series, but still, you, you can see how those relationships go on throughout their career. That's that's so cool. So that's a perfect segue into RPS. So you just got back from Rookie Premiere. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jason kind of saved me on this. We So I, I was supposed to be doing interviews with our players remotely from Dallas. They're in L.A. at the Coliseum. We had a laptop set up. And, and I, I was going to be interviewing 42 people. Well, uh, we, we had some, some technical difficulties along the way. Jason was nice, nice enough to step in to kind of bridge the gap while we figured these out. He ended up doing more than half of the interviews, which, again, we had 42 interviews lined up. This is an intimidating day. It is from essentially 10.30 a.m. until, I want to say, 7.30 at night, almost Central wall to time, wall. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> almost yeah. wall to wall. And uh, oh yeah, central. It is. Um, but it, it's a lot, especially you know we, we get essentially about ten minutes with each player. Even that is is consuming. So Jason was kind enough to step in. Ended up doing like I want to say twenty five, maybe thirty of the forty two. No yeah, I lost track. <laughs> it was it was. Thank you on camera for that. That was that was a huge save. And finally, I got to do some of them, but. It, what I love about these interviews is it's an opportunity to bond with these players outside of just seeing them play football and mm -hmm. them signing cards and doing some of the other yeah. stuff we have them do. You get to sit down with them and talk to them about like on some personal levels. You know, we get to we get to figure out like what their favorite holiday is and, and a lot of fun stuff. Like it's not hard hitting questions. It's it's fun stuff. Mm -hmm. What were there any players that you got a chance to sit down with where you're like, I didn't like I, I was fairly indifferent about this person until we got a chance to interview and now I'm a fan or collector even um it's it's a it's a it's a whirlwind of a day like you said <laughs> that's I mean, true literally, that's true. you know you're running through so many of them and we you know we've got 10 minutes with each with each guy and there are 42 that we're running through and you know it was funny that that for when we started to hit that that technical difficulty right at the beginning you know, it was like a whirlwind. There was just one straight after the other, and and so naturally, like the first couple of interviews, not planned, I swear, but we're New England Patriots, and so you know, we went through the whole Taekwon Thornton, Billy Zapp, and you know, and Pierre Strong, and so I get to Pierre Strong, and by that point, I think it was like probably the fifth consecutive interview for me, and I like my mind is just swirling, and I'm looking at him, and I'm saying <laughs> Pierre, and he's like looking at me, and I'm like. But he had this look on his face, and I'm like, oh like my maybe God. you called him the wrong name. Am I calling him the wrong name? And I'm like <laughs> trying to look down at my cheat sheet that I have on my on my seat to make sure I'm like, yeah, no, that's his name. Why is he looking at me like that? <laughs> um, but you know, so just whirlwind. Um, I think it, you know, it's it's interesting because every guy has a different story in terms of how they got there, and, right. and you know, um, you know, there's that, and then you know, you get to. You know, I mean, obviously the the big guys, the Aidens and the Malik Willis's and the Matt Corrals and the and the guys that we've you know everyone's focused on. Well, there's these other guys that kind of come in that really have a, a phenomenal story too. And you're yeah. and you're you know Damian Pierce from the Houston Texans. I just all energy, you know. And yes, you, like for me, I was like, whoa, like. I like this guy. Like yeah. he's fun. Yes. You know, and and so you know that, and then you know, and then there's these other little touches. So like you know, this kid from Texas Tech, this wide receiver who was drafted by the Miami Dolphins, Eric Azukama, uh, super hard last name to pronounce. <laughs> I've had like four years, five years to learn it because he played at Timber Creek High School. Um, you know, well, my daughter was at Keller High School, and they knew oh. each other. So you know, we. I watched Eric when he was playing in high school and knew, like, man, if this kid stays healthy, yeah, he's a freak. He's got, he's gonna play. Yeah, you know, and and sure enough, there he is. He's off off to Miami. He's got a great wide receiver core, you know, room down there, and I think good quarterback be fun to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. It, it was it was really fun, and uh, yeah, I, I really I geek out when I meet a professional athlete that's really cool and down to earth, like. Understandably, they talk to a lot of people, and I, I, I'm sure they do a lot of podcasts. And they have long days. Like these were, they, they were fairly long days, even for the players. 
So the fact that some of them came through and they were cool and they were open and vulnerable and answering these questions, like it, it was so much fun despite being a long day and some yeah. technical. And I think that's it too. Is I mean, you know, we, we run into these guys and it's always like as you get to the end of the day, it's really long and hard, but it's hard on everyone. And sure. so, you know, as those guys are sitting there fighting, they just get that last bit of energy. You know, I, I know that we were talking to some of the guys and they were – you know, like, oh man, do we got to do any more? Like, <laughs> I know. Come on, we just got to grind this one out. Like, yeah. we're all here beat down, tired. Like, we get it. Like, you know, let's just finish this thing up strong and do do it, you know, because we want to get it out to the collectors. And I'm like, right. this is your opportunity to talk to the collectors, you know, to make them a fan of you yep. before you even step on the field so that they start collecting your cards. Exactly. And so that's what we tell them before they step on and, and start doing the interviews with us and inter interacting with us. It is. It, it makes sense. It, it's kind of their... I always like to say, like, your autograph is kind of your legacy if you're a professional athlete. Like, you want you want it to represent your brand well. So don't completely phone it in whether you're signing a lot or not. But, um, yeah, it was, it was a really cool experience. And I, I'm looking forward to being there in person next year. Uh, let's talk about NFTs. So Panini has obviously, we, we've definitely expanded our involvement with NFTs like a lot over the past year. It's really become a, a big deal around here. And you, Jason, have been kind of thrown in like head first into this as like, you gotta, you gotta learn this and you gotta figure out how to, how to market it. So how, what was your first kind of, uh, what was your first experience with NFTs? How did, how did that come about? I mean, I think the first time we started thinking about it was uh, obviously the experience was, I mean, probably in 2018 or so when we started thinking about blockchain and what right. blockchain was going to look like and how it would look for us, you know, and what it would bring to the trading card category. And, and so we started looking at it there. So that was like my first touch point Got it. with it. And then obviously as we launched our platform in January of 2020, all the elements that kind of go into that. Um, again, we're still heavily focused on, you know, blockchain, 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 and NFT is just the engine that makes it all work, yep. right? Or the non-fungible token. And so, you know, then all of a sudden, everyone was talking about NFTs and no one was talking about blockchain right. to the point where, like, people didn't even realize that they were one in the same. They're together. So you're explaining that to partners and you're explaining that to people that, no, no, they're interconnected. This is how it all works. And so you're, you're, you're pushing in on that side, but then to see, you know, the evolution of where we started with, you know, you know, purely digital assets, you know, assets tied to a physical card in that first launch in January mm -hmm. of 2020. Where the we OG had, 100? Yeah, where yeah. we had a hundred, you know, you know, a hundred cars, a hundred of the best athletes across all sports, like, you know, past, present, you know, and rookies, you know, for that matter. You know, and pushing that stuff out and seeing what was happening just in the early days of that. Um, and then just this transition into the pack format, at, you know, back in July of 2021 to see how far it's come just in that part and, and knowing that that's how we get more people engaged into the NFT platform right. has been, you know, amazing. And obviously, you know, lots of things are going on in the marketplace and so many things kind of what happens on one side affects what happens on an NFT perspective, For sure. you know, and so being able to, you know, balance that out in, you know, in volatile times as, in, as well as in like, you know, hype times, the, the hype times are just as volatile as the volatile times. And yeah. so managing that sustainability across the platform is super important. And so that's what we're dialed in on. I, I I was really impressed. I I knew about NFTs prior to coming here to work. I've been here for five months. I've definitely learned a ton in the mm -hmm. past five months that I wasn't aware of prior to that. But what I'm really impressed with is our Discord community that launched essentially right before I started or right as I was starting. Yeah. And it's like there is a lot of passionate collectors on there. And it went from zero to several thousand people on there. I don't know what the current number is, yeah. but uh, like the Discord w is a great opportunity for people that like the brand and like NFTs to go in there and, you know, and buy, sell, trade, and, and really just communicate with other collectors. Yeah, you know, for the NFT marketplace and, you know, that's where everything in NFT world lives is right. in Discord. And so, you know, um, that Discord, the, the unofficial Panini Discord channel, 
launched, you know, kind of early on and we dived in and we, you know, we made sure that we participated and had a presence in there. And, you know, as we were trying to look through and figure out like, hey, do we create our own Panini, you know, Discord channel? There's this unofficial Discord channel. What should we do here? You know, we just let that kind of evolve and become the Panini official channel. Got you it. know, and once we did that, we had the ability to do a little bit, do things a little bit more differently because we had ownership of that channel as opposed to it being unaffiliated, um, you know, dropping players into the Discord channel to right. do interviews, you know, yeah. giveaways, airdrops, you name it. You know, there's a lot more that we can do because it's now the Panini official channel. So, Well, I, uh, I dare I say we have one of the cooler Discord channels out there. And if you haven't checked it out, please do. Even if you're not in NFTs, it's a bunch of collectors. Like, it, there is some card talk trading card talk on there, physical trading card talk, I should qualify that, uh, on, on the Discord channel. So go go check it out and join it. Like, we do tons of giveaways. We, as Jason was saying, we, we have players drop in every now and then. We had several drop in during uh, the rookie premiere, uh, like, a lot, more than 20 or something. Uh, was... That was, we, we actually did that on a live stream. We did? Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. cool. Um, so, yeah, go check that out. So, future uh, of Panini NFTs, is there any any... Any information we can give out that hasn't been, uh, you know, already put out there? I mean, uh, we, we launched the Liga collection yesterday. Yep. It's on fire yes. right now. Like, man, it's, I, I've, you know, I've bought, you know, more than I need. To <laughs> I, you're in I'm your like office and different. I hear that, that yeah. noise of yeah. the packs opening, the digital packs opening. It's, the whole experience is great. It's what, yeah, it's one of those things. So, you know, it, it's research. No, um, <laughs> you know, that's what I say when, when my wife is sitting next to me. But I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, we, we're, we've watched with La Liga. We've got a whole bunch of different things coming into play. I can't share right. what's happening there, Understood. but super excited for what the next two to three months are going to deliver on the NFT side of things, you know, to just level it up another level. Um, stuff that like you know just doesn't happen overnight. It's been sure. stuff that we've been working on for months. You know you've been yes. on some of those yeah. calls, yeah. Um, where it's just when like development logging. teams are involved, yeah. you know it's complicated. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that and all the other pieces to it too. So, right. um, but yeah, so I mean, super excited for that stuff to kind of come to fruition and share that with you know the community and and now just just bring that piece of it to life. Yeah, and we uh, something I, I would love to mention. Uh, Brett Whiteley, if you're on the Discord channel, you know Brett. Uh, Santa Brett, at one point in time, I think he gets branded with a new character each month because he does lots of giveaways there. Brett is a very popular character in Discord. So we're going to start doing a weekly Instagram live. I think we're going to start, uh, well, this will come out Friday. It will be the day before. But Thursday afternoons, uh, Instagram lives, where we're doing a lot of Discord connections and we're we're uh, revealing winners of different giveaways we have in there, so make sure to check that out too uh, if you're on Instagram, which if you're not at this point in time, you're probably not watching this podcast anyways. Uh, <laughs> okay, so that's cool. We got a lot going on with FTs. Uh -huh. um, we also have the National yeah. quickly approaching. It's, so it, it's wild around here because we have so many events. Like You have to prioritize what's, what's coming up most reason what's coming up quickest yeah and you can you can start paying attention to the other stuff but we really have to concentrate on one big event at a time and and kind of build in the background but so what what's going on with the national uh i'm guessing we're gonna have a pretty big footprint there yeah i mean it, it's in atlantic city this year it'll be great to get back to atlantic city last year's national was phenomenal in chicago and you know there were some things that we couldn't do because we we're still kind of like feeling like it was COVID pandemic and things that were missing from last right. year that was right. like really hard for us. You know, the, the Panini VIP party not being able to have it last year in Chicago was hard. Yeah. It, like, you know, you wanted to be able to celebrate what's happened in the last two and a half years in the category. And we hadn't been around all those people. Um, you know, so AC, you know, we're bringing back the Panini VIP party. That's Ooh. happening Saturday night. Boom. It's going to be ready to go. Uh, we're super excited for that. All you know, is, all you need to know is that it'll deliver like it always does. It's gonna be big. And I won't. You, know, <laughs> you just have to wait and see. I mean, that's that's how we do it. Um, but we've got some other tricks up our sleeve too that we're looking forward to sharing as we get closer to the, um, you know, 
I almost said the Panini VIP party. But <laughs> as we get closer to the national, we get some other tricks up our sleeve as well. That He's excited we about these. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We have some some really cool surprises coming up. It. I've never been to the VIP party. Obviously, this is my first year that I will be an employee. Yeah. Um, is there is there a way for people to buy like passes to that, or is it only invite only, or how's that work? No, there's there's passes and there's ways to get them. There'll, there'll be some that are typically available on our site, and then okay. obviously through distributors um, is the way you go. You go. So go to Pani, the Penny Direct site to when look we, eventually. Yeah, eventually. Okay. Okay. Got I'm it. sure. Got I'm it. sure there'll be a blog post on that. <laughs> uh, if we only or, knew the blogger. We, yeah. If we only knew the blogger. <laughs> Um, well, I, I can't wait. I the last the last national I went to was 2019, and I had I like a videographer with me there, and we spent like 50 percent of our time in the Panini booth just because talking to Tracy. There was so much going on there, and I I, I just I love the setup, and I, I can't wait to see what uh, Scotty Scotty P has a lot to do with our with our footprint. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll let Scotty talk about it eventually. A lot to do with the footprint and everything <laughs> else. So, yes, that's know, true. You know, for Scott, the national begins the day after the national ends for the following year. So, um, and you know, we start planning on on all that stuff. But I mean, for Scott, it literally like starts to you know come to life the next day. Mm. I believe so. it. I believe it. After seeing what I called Panini Island, I believe that yeah. that, that was definitely not created overnight. Um, so before the national, we have a couple of other events on the calendar that are important. Yeah, yeah. So we have NBA draft, NBA summer league. Yeah. What what do, what do we have going on for those? So NBA draft, obviously, we'll get to see where these incoming rookies are going to land, and we're super excited for that part of the process. You can never predict. I mean, I know uh, what's going to happen, where people end up. So um, you know, we're looking forward to that. We'll have a presence in New York uh, for NBA draft. We'll do some stuff. Uh, with the NBA Players Association like we've done historically cool. uh, on the Tuesday of NBA Draft Week. Uh, and then Summer League, you know, we've had um, we, we've had a presence at Summer League for a while now. Um, and there's also been this kind of pivot since last year where there's an, you know, impromptu rookie photo shoot. Really? Um, it's okay. Not like a, it, it's not our full rookie photo shoot. Um, but you know, all the guys are there, so we're going to be capturing content with those guys. We're going to be getting their photos, you know, so that we can start to get these guys ready to go in our upcoming NBA product for the 22-23 season. I, I can't wait. I'm I'm a sucker for NBA anything, so that I just I can't wait to be even lightly involved with the draft or heavily involved or with summer league. It's it's so fun. I can't mention the NBA without mentioning your Celtics. Congratulations. Thank you. They're going to the finals. Did you like did you see this coming? I the Celtics have had a good team for several years and for some reason it just didn't work out for them in the playoffs and this this year they're there. It felt like when they made that when when it just started to click in January that there was something different about the team. Yeah. And but you're just like you don't know, right? I mean, you've got to grind through the rest of the season. You've got to stay healthy. You know, you've got you know a seven a seven game series where anything can happen. You're playing the Bucks, you know, uh, which is scary yeah. in its own right. right now. You know, and leading off with the Brooklyn Nets, and you know, and people are talking about like you know, hey, they should just tank the last couple of games so they don't have to face Brooklyn. And ah. you know, that mindset of the Celtics were like, no, we're gonna play who we need to play. It doesn't matter, right? And so when they when they get into that mindset, you're like, okay, these guys are. I mean. You know whether you play the Brooklyn Brooklyn Nets, you know, in the opening round of the playoffs or in the you know conference championships. Yeah, you still got to play them. So I mean, two teams that could have easily gone all the way. Yeah. Again this year, and I want to say the Nets were probably picked early on in the oh, season to go all the way yeah, with sure. that squad of theirs. Yeah. So I mean, you know, you you always kind of look like, hey, there's the potential here. Um, and, you know, I felt pretty comfortable that, like, okay, they just need to keep playing the way that they're playing. Yeah. But, you know, someone has a bad game where they follow out, and then you're, you know, then you're like, okay, now what? Or an injury. Um, I know. Yeah, Gosh, it changes and, so quick. You know, um, that, Tate, that Tatum fall in the, you know, in, in the Bucks series where he went down and went into the locker room, and you thought, like, he screwed up his shoulder, and you're like, great, now what? Yeah. There's still four minutes left to go in that game. You know, and you're thinking, great. This could be the end of it. Um, thankfully, he came back out and he's 
continue to ball. Gosh, so. he's been killing it, man. It gets so much more, or at least it seems like it gets so much more physical in the playoffs. You know, there's everybody's like getting in somebody's face and there's injuries and it just it's so exciting even if you don't watch the nba season i can't recommend the nba playoffs enough it is always good and i so i i made the prediction uh about gosh a month and a half ago is that accurate man that the finals would be golden state versus celtics i never get my sports predictions right this one paid off how do you like obviously you're a little biased how do you like the Celts versus Steph Curry and the Warriors like I know the Celtics have the defense but can they hold back oh, we're sweeping the Warriors sweeping. a sweep in four baby <laughs> <laughs> that would be something else if I'm it was kidding. a sweep I'm kidding no I don't I don't think it's going to be a sweep I mean I think this game I think the series could go seven yeah that'd um, be amazing you know oh, I and love that you know, I think everyone, you know, the NBA would love for it to go seven. TV would love for it to go seven. You've got, you know, Boston and San Francisco markets. Two great um, markets. You know, two really, you know, storied tradition of championships. Yep. These guys that think that they're a dynasty, you know, <laughs> on the West Coast, you know, um, you know, trying to come in and, you know, and take on the green and we'll see what happens. But, I mean, you know, Steph... Steph is a scary proposition um, every time. Yeah. Um, you know, you need to. Marcus Smart just needs to play great defense. I mean, you, defensive player of the year. Now's your time to show out. Yeah. So, you know, we'll see what happens. I mean, he's he's gone up against some of the best of them in this. You know, he has in, in this playoffs, and he's got one last task to do. And you know, that's probably going to be seven more games. So Gosh, you know, let's it's go. So good. I yeah. can't wait. Um, so we're almost finished here. So you, you've got this really cool job. What would you say is your favorite thing about working in, full-time in the sports card industry? I mean, it's, you know, coming from the agency side, you know, you had the ability where, like, it never got stale because you had multiple clients. And so there were always clients that you favored over another because some were more fun or whatever. Sure. You know, and so when I left the agency and joined Panini, I was like, okay, I'll just have to focus on one client. Um, instead, you're focusing on over a hundred brands, so it's right. more like a right. hundred clients. Yeah. Um, you know, and you know, and then you've got the sports side, the, the different sports side of it. So I love that. Like every day is new and different. You've got a you've got a plan, and you've got some things that you need to execute against, and you're pushing in on that. But it's just constantly different every time. And so, you know, and it's constantly fresh because every year there's a new rookie class and every year there's new personalities and people that kind of come to life and you're, you know, dialing it, dialing it on, in on that side. So I think that's the part that's the most fun. And then obviously the people. I mean, Panini is best in class. The people in this building are the best in class. And so, or, or at least most of us. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> you know, you're getting there. So. <laughs> you heard it. <laughs> so... Um, you know, I mean that, you know, when you work with a team like we have, um, and that are all committed to doing what we do and doing it at a completely different level, like that just continues to drive you every day to want to keep doing more. Yeah. So that's yeah. the part that's great. I mean, it's why I'm here for 12 years. It's, it's funny, like Panini, there's a lot of ex athletes in the building, as you would imagine in a sports card company, but like you can smell the competitiveness in this building like we want to win we want to have success with every product we put out like we really push each other and, and it, it like it makes total sense when you start talking to people and you're like oh okay like you're an ex-athlete or like you worked in this and it all like it all comes through and i feel mm -hmm. like everybody truly cares about the brand and all the products absolutely i okay i have a related but oddball question for you that i ask okay. everybody in here so where do you think the 2018-19 Prism Black, the one of one, Luka Doncic is today? It's never publicly been shown. Do you think it's still in an unopened box or a case somewhere in a dusty warehouse in the middle of nowhere? Or do you think it's in some mega collector, some whales collection that doesn't care, maybe doesn't have an Instagram account and just has it stored away with like the rest of their 
they're, they're priceless cards. Where, where do you think it is? Man, in, in today's, you know, social environment where everyone li- loves to show their hits. Yeah. Can't I feel help ourselves. Like, I feel like it's still got to be in a box somewhere. Um, you know, where, where someone's just holding that box because, you know, it's the 18, 19 class. Right, right. You know, it's the Luca class. It's the Trey Young class. Yes. And, you know, and so they're just holding that box. You know? Oh, my gosh. I mean, this is going to be the thing that Ken Golden opens 40 years from now. <laughs> like with, with Drake, with an older Drake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. With an older Drake. Yeah. I, I mean, how wild would it be if somebody just had a single box that they collected, maybe they collect each year of Prism, put it away in their closet, and it was the box. Uh, I, I, I'm happy to hear you say that. The more people I hear say that, the more hope I have that it's just waiting for someone to open out yeah. there. It's, it's hard, like, having an unopened box, just, I, I don't have the self-control <laughs> no, to do dude. it. Because I'm like, no, it's in my box. Like, yeah, I've of gotta, course it I've is. I've got to give it a shot, and then of course it's not. But, <laughs> you know, so, I mean, I, I, man, I, I don't, those people that can sit there and hold on to boxes, man, you have built different. You just are. I don't know what's wrong with you. Yeah, whatever but, you have, I need to bottle up a little bit. Yeah, I, I don't either. have that self-control. Um kudos to you so for holding out for the next 20 years but but yeah props to the box collectors i i I couldn't collect boxes myself but jason i know you're a busy guy man thank you very much for sharing some of your time with us today it's about darn time you're on the show man all right yeah hey you know if hack ever invited me on i mean hack you know (laughs) he had his chance yes all right guys we'll see you later all right so let's do some pack ripping i'm gonna start out with uh let me reintroduce the products we're opening. So we're gonna do brand new Prism Football, and then we're gonna do brand new Revolution WWE. I'm gonna start out with WWE. This is uh, Revolution, man. Revolution is a very popular product. I was just talking to a very well-known uh, influencer in the space earlier. You may have heard of him, his name is Pac-Man. We were talking about some stuff, some uh, potential collaborations. He is, dude, I don't know what it is about the Galactics, but they got, there is a like cult following for that parallel. <laughs> this may be the best content of the episode, me trying to put this box together. So there, that's what, that's what it would look like if you saw it in a hobby shop. There are, how many packs? We have eight packs, five cards per pack. My math serves me right, that's 40 cards. Let's do this. Um, yeah, so as you guys know, this is our second WWE product we put out on the, uh, on the heels of Prism, which, gosh, these are, they are so shiny. Incredibly shiny. So I'm gonna show, let's, let's just show a base card. So this is uh, Drew McIntyre. Again, if you ever get stuck on a deserted island and you are able to choose one product from Panini, I'd go with Revolution. Probably gonna be able to signal multiple aircraft from miles away with this stuff. Uh, also here is so I noticed something that's, that's good for people that are newer to the brand. There's a cheat sheet on the back of your parallels that tells you right under the number which parallel this is. Cause you can, they're pretty distinct. You can tell it's something different than the base, but you don't always know which one it is. This is the groove, groove parallel of AJ Styles. Oh, The Miz, The Miz is a crowd favorite, man. Shout out to The Miz. That dude has blown up. Again, I remember when Mike The Miz was working on this character on uh, MTV's uh, The Real World, I believe. He may have been a road ruler. I thought he was a real world guy. But he was working on his character then, and it was already hilarious, so. Guys, that guy's a national treasure. Okay, so our uh, our parallel is an Astro Miko Sat- 
Satamora. That is an Astro. So I want to say the Galactics are numbered. I can't remember. I've pulled one. It's been a while. Let's see. Okay, so here is, which one is this? With Shawn Michaels Triple H, this is the D Generation X. And then, ooh, I got the Fractal. Sheamus. Sheamus, more likely. <laughs> this is the Fractal Parallel. Gosh, these cards look so good. <laughs> Even if you're not a wrestling collector and you like you like Revolution. I can see you getting down with this. All right. Uh oh, something special. Got the Undertaker. Oh, Cosmic out of 149. Check out that. The Undertaker is legendary status. That's a nice looking card. Matt, did you ever have a uh, favorite wrestler? Or do you have a favorite wrestler currently? The Hulkster. The Hulkster. <laughs> All right. I mean, it's hard not to love the Hulkster. I don't know that Hulk is in Revolution. I don't know that I've seen him. Sha oh, Shawn Michaels. And our parallel is the Bella Twins. Bree and Nikki. And this is the Groove Parallel. Definitely have the best names and parallels in Revolution. Braun Breaker, rookie. So it's Cora Jade. Oh, and this is the Astro Parallel. I'm really happy we decided to put the cheat codes on the back because that's nice, especially when you're doing a break. You know exactly what you which parallel you've hit. Seth freaking Rollins. He's gonna show this card because he's got an awesome name. Oh, got the Bella Twins again. Which one is this? Another Astro. Was our other one? It was, was it? No, it was Groove. Got the whole rainbow of the Bella Twins here. This is the Astro Parallel. All right, last pack mojo. I also want to show this. This is Ricochet Vortex. This is an insert. So you're not guaranteed an autograph in these boxes. So unless I have it in here, I did not hit Becky Lynch. Big name. All right, Seamus makes another appearance. And this is the angular, the angular parallel out of 199. Seamus Hotbox. And we'll end with this. Bobby Lashley, uh, Supernova. Ooh, that's cool. All right. Man, those are, that is, that is a fun break. That was a good time. All right, moving on to the box we've been waiting months to break. 2021 Prism Football. 
Roll that sweet promotional video right now. Be the full display experience here. Look at that. Let's see, we've got Josh Allen and Trevor Lawrence on the front of this box. That's gonna be 12 packs, I believe. That's 12 packs for me and 12 packs for me. Okay. It's raining outside. Hold on, I gotta, gotta do a little housekeeping here. Okay. Here we go. Oh man, there's tons of parallels in these boxes. The hobby boxes are loaded. I was not just blowing smoke on the, the blog. These are fantastic. So I'm gonna, let's see, who do I wanna show here? Let's show a rookie. This is JC Horn. So this is, this is what our base card looks like. And now we get in the prism. So we've got or I'm sorry, the parallels. Tylen Wallace, this is a purple ice. It's out of 225. And then I've got Jonathan Taylor, this is the hide insert. Sorry, that's not the hide, that's hype. <laughs> I get superstitious about my piles of packs sometimes. I feel like I gotta go through that outside pile before I get to the inside pile. Don't know why, but I do. That's silver, all right. Am I the only one that kind of cheats and looks ahead to see the colors that are coming? Can't help myself. All right, I was gonna show Tyree Kill, but he's no longer chief, so let's show Brett Favre. Okay, so this looks like a red wave. I believe that is a red wave, about a 149. And this is, oh cool, lockdown. This is an insert set. Deion Sanders. This is Silver Parallel. So Matt, would you say Prism is your favorite football product? Absolutely. <laughs> Good answer. All right, because we're in cowboy country, Emmett Smith. Base. Oh, Cooper Cup. All right, I need to keep moving. Uh, got a Najee Harris rookie. Okay, here we go. This is an orange parallel out of 60. Pretty nice. And then Quentin Nelson, we have a silver. So when you open your box of hobby, you will definitely find that you get a lot of colors in these. Okay, oh man, that's nice. So Seth Williams, this is blue ice, which it's one of the more popular parallels for sure. This is out of 99. And then our first auto here, uh, Aziz 
Ajaluri. Close. He's a rookie. This is, again, this looks like that red wave. This is out of 149. We've got a Justin Fields rookie. Man, this is a uh, one of the best classes, dare I say, draft classes in a while. I mean, so, tons of good quarterbacks, promising young quarterbacks, uh, and then a lot of skill positions. Sam Ellinger, speaking of quarterbacks, got Red Wave. This is the Brilliance insert. Oh, another auto. Pratt Fre Freyermuth. Sorry, Pat. Uh, this looks, whatever that, that design is, the new design, whether that's Blue Wave or Blue something else, this is out of 199. And I got a Tua Auto. How cool is that out of 149? So let's see, is it two autos per box, I believe? Yes. All right, so we hit our auto average. Hunter Long, rookie, that's an orange out of 249. I did notice there seem to be more orange parallels, maybe because it's a little bit higher numbered now than I'd remember seeing in the past, which is fine by me. Micah Parsons, shout out Cowboys. Micah Parsons, silver rookie. Love to hit a gold. We already hit the poor man's gold. Now let's hit a real gold. Eric Dickerson, man. This one's for Scotty P. Older players on new technology. Elijah Molden, and this is that blue ice again at a 99. Could just be called cracked ice. It looks like blue cracked ice to me. Elijah Mitchell, base rookie. And our first purple, Pete Werner. Out of 125. And a Bo Jackson silver. I love that we have Bo Jackson in this set. That is, I mean, that is a classic looking Bo Jackson card there. I love that card. Way to go, team. That could end well for us. Trey Lance, rookie. More quarterbacks. Najee Harris, rookie. This is a cool green. I don't know which green. That looks like a green hyper. I don't know what we're calling that. Green out of 175. And another quarterback, young Zach Wilson. This is new recruits insert set. Justin Herbert. Oh, nice. Jalen Waddle. Green, again, green something at a 175. Looks a lot like a green hyper, but. And Grady Jarrett Silver. Last pack. Here we go. Oh, nice. Micah Parsons, Purple Ice. Out of 225. And to end it, everybody's favorite quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, Fireworks. All right, guys. So that was 2022 Revolution WWE. And of course, 
2021 Prism Football. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We will see you next week.